we can see that, okay. So I just want to let everybody know we're recording and then I'll get back to everybody a bit later. Um, we're going to spotlight me. What we'll do is we'll spotlight whoever's speaking or whoever's like the person demonstrating the time. Oh, 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 hi. Oh, good timing. Hi, Jim. Hello. Hi, good, good time. We're literally just, just going to get started. So that was really good timing. <laughs> oh, great. So good to see you. Good morning. You too. Good morning. Yeah, thanks. thanks everybody for joining today. It's really good to see you all. Uh, we were just talking, just um, we will be wrapping up around 10 15 ish um, today. So um, and I know but Jim's going to leave a bit earlier. Jim, you said you had to leave around nine. Yeah, uh, yes, just a couple of minutes before nine. Yes. Okay. If, if you're okay and if everyone else is okay with it, I thought we'll let Jim kind of go first today. Um, because he has to get off pretty early and then Nick's, Nick's going to leave early-ish so uh, we'll sort of do it so that those people that can kind of get off the meeting earlier kind of go first um, and then uh, we'll just sort of take it easy and just go with the flow after that. Um, also just wanted to say it's really good to see everybody, hope you're all staying positive and you know <laughs> motivated but positive um, it's been a very strange week, so let's, yes. hope, yeah, let's hope this is the end of you know, yeah. what's going on. So, um, what we'll do is we'll spotlight the video, so hopefully this should work, but whoever is the person either speaking or demonstrating is the, you know, the main spotlight of the video. Uh, but uh, if that doesn't seem to work, you know, just let us know, and we've got the chat feature if you, you know, there's some question you want to ask and you didn't want to kind of jump in or something, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the chat feature as well. Um, but uh, other than that, we don't really have a sort of format. Um, but I do have a request from Joe. Uh, so that could I go over cloud hands? Uh, so I, I will do that for him as well before we finish today. Okay, so because I'm mindful, it's already getting close to 22. So perhaps we should let Jim start and then we'll spotlight Jim and then um, we'll go over each person as, as we go through. So I'll turn it over to Jim. Okay, hi everybody. I guess I'll be the first victim or sacrificial lamb as they say. <laughs> uh, um, I thought I'd, I'd do um, the, the brief bit I did last time to see if I've, I've corrected myself. Okay. So let's see. Ah, sorry, I'm getting spaced here. Dang it. Sorry, I hadn't had to uh, yeah. bear, bear with me just for a second. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat>
Okay, very good. Okay, well, well. I, uh, I, I know that there were a couple of uh, wrong details I had in there, uh, but. Uh, <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, so, it, um, so first of all, we'll we'll just go back to uh, spotlight in the video. Okay. So, thank, thank you. The, my my technical assistant, Colin. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> just off camera. Uh, so, first of all, um, good to see you. Really nice to see you. You too. Yeah. You too. Um, I can see, despite the sort of break there where, you know, you were thinking about the move, the, the flow does seem a lot smoother. So forget the sort of stop where you were, you know, thinking of the movement. <clears throat> Apart from that, you know, the, the flow was, was very nice and smooth. So that's, you know, a good feeling to the movement. Um, you do seem a lot smoother and softer, but there's still, I think, for the, at the beginning in particular, when you first start, this um, energy is like too stiff. So the, the intention, the energy is still like too, too rigid, too focused. So it's about getting that balance of being, um, you know, not like sort of scattered and like, you oh, know, what's going on? You know, so you're totally unfocused, but then there's the other extreme, if you like, of being too focused. So you're already pulling that back but I would say from the very beginning, just before you start, I know it's very strange when you're doing it like this and everybody watching because you're sort of mindful of, oh, go get on. But try to sort of feel, you know, that you're, um, I think probably when you step on stage, you know, you're in that mode of, you know, I'm here with everybody and you're open to the audience. If you keep that as your guiding post for how you should perform the form, that would help you relax that sensation. Um, okay. So that, that's the sort of uh, part about the energy and the intention. Um, the other thing really, and we're going to talk about it later as well when I meet you. Um, I think at the moment still the trunk. Oh, oh, we, oh, we have Noah. Oh, that was very nice. We've got Noah joining us. It's Noah that I think there was the gentleman who was at the park. So that, that's here. wonderful. <laughs> Hooray, yay, thank you so much. Um, so yeah. back to the trunk, um, your arms are still moving a lot, but your trunk is less involved. So I would say put your focus on um, when you're doing the beginning movements. So at the moment, there's, there's this, but this is not involved. So have to be a little slower. So when you first start, think of first like in here, like your inside. So if you can expand your ribs as you breathe in and then let them sink a bit. So make that the start rather than the arms the start, if you see what I mean. Yes, yes. So, because you've done a lot of work on, you know, this, uh, you know, your body and your trunk and it, isolating and opening and differentiating between like the ribs and the waist and the spine. So you have to go slow so that they have a chance to get involved in the movement. So uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I think is difficult to do in, in this sort of forum, but that's something to kind of work into whatever you do. So then eventually, whenever you do it in front of anyone, it's the same because you know, your body's uh, already used to working like that. Yes. So, I would say, so I would say those are the sort of key takeaways. Okay. Um, everything else you know, is just you know, repeating the, the movements to kind of have them um, sort of down in your mind. Uh, the only other thing I would say, just for your post stance, it was a bit, you know, sort of flat. So try to get a little bit more of this U shape in the knees. Just um, so at the beginning, it was more this. Try to get a little bit more sort of sink down in the hips, sort of round, okay. sort of more rounder instead of A shaped. If you know what I mean. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks. Are you okay? 
I hope that I can, my new slogan will be make the Don Tien great again. <laughs> yeah, you need to have a have a song. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. I call it. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll we'll correspond on email a bit later. So you know, okay. you want yes. to do time with me. So you need okay. to let me know later what's best for you. So uh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Jim. Um, thank you. And I think, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm going to just stick around till I have to go and, and watch. Oh, okay. okay, so I, I think we said that, I think, unless anyone else is sort of, you know, having to leave very early, I think Nick um, is going to go next. So I, I bought this little board. <laughs> it's supposed to rub off easily. It's very careful. I thought this would. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Professor Rosa. Uh, I just want to say, Jim, I really enjoyed watching you do that uh, portion. Thank you. Very, Thanks. very flowy, and I thought it was great. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, and I. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Master Rose, I'm going to do basically the same same uh, <laughs> section of the form. And um, I've been trying to be mindful of your comments in previous workshops, you know, elbows down, not so extended uh, with the arms, and, and as you just commented, um, generating from the body. So I'm going to try to display that, but we'll see. Oh, and you, one, one other thing, if, if afterwards, um, in addition to whatever comments you might have, if you would just comment on this portion, this transition from here to here, Gabe and I have been just wondering about some of what's going on there. So I'll just leave that for now. Yeah, so remind, remind me later because it, the video sort of cut out a little bit, so I, I didn't quite recognize where you meant. But tell, oh, tell wow. me afterwards, and we'll, I'll, I'll look at that as well.
Um, well done there, thank you. Uh, just one, uh, just one thing to say. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, we can we make sure everyone is muted if you're not the person featured. <coughs> make sure because sometimes there's odd noises that you don't know are happening, but that we perhaps can hear them. Um, so uh, well done, Nick. Um, okay, um, first of all, very good flow. Uh, just because I think it's um, partly uh, the connection. So every now and again, your uh, video kind of froze a little bit. So and that, okay. that's, that's just the connection. <clears throat> so of course, you know, that kind of, every now and again, there was something that I couldn't quite see because of that. So I apologize, I, I can't comment on everything because of that. But um, overall, most of the videos seem to work well. So I can see there was a very good flow. Uh, again, same, same kind of things that I was saying to Jim. Um, one of the major issues is your, tr you know, your trunk, your waist, your dentier and the spine. This area is not moving enough and the extremities move a bit too much. So mm -hmm. focus needs to come more and more to the, the inside workings. So the overall flow is really good, but this flow is, is mm -hmm. still uh, sort of trying to play catch up, but it, it's mm -hmm. not able to kind of keep up as yet. So that's something for you to kind of really focus on. And the other problem I would say in particular um, is uh, you need to focus more on this being suspended from above. You sink into your knees a lot. So you're, it's almost like you sort of uh, collapse down. So this is missing. So this connection to uh, the sky. So the earth energy is too strong. And this sort of opposing uh, connection to the sky is then lost. So you have to think of that happening <clears throat> in duality. So as you sink down, imagine you're still connected from above. If not, it's just, you know, straight down. So as you go down, thinking of something rising. So that's something that needs to take place all the time. So it's uh, easy to lose as you focus more on, well, I want to get sunk down to the earth. So it's something you have to really kind of consider constantly, this, you know, uh, suspension from above. So, Master Rose, if I may ask just so that I can clarify, I, I think I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm sinking and the whole body's going down and I'm not, I'm, so um, there's an exercise and it's, it's what your comment along these lines where we sink and, and push up at the same time so that we get this, this yes. um, internalization of, of, of up and down at the same time? Yes. Is it a little bit like that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, in... You know, in Chinese, they'd be saying this is, you know, the yin yang. This is like yeah. if you're going down, you know, you have to have this simultaneous rising. And if you're rising, you have to have a simultaneous falling. So it's about having this connection constantly between heaven and earth. And you are the conduit for that. So exercises, <coughs> excuse me, there are different exercises and, and foundation exercises that help you. Uh, kind of accomplish that and master that. So yeah, that would be a good start to kind of focus that in your mind as you sink, you know, something is still connecting you to a bar. Um, the um, flying phoenix is also a very good exercise for that. So we have this, you know, we have this rising, you know, we have this rising, but as you're rising, you know, you're still pushing down into the earth and that helps to give you this uh, constant sort of um, juxtaposition of up and down together. And as you're falling, you're still suspended like by a string as you go down. So yeah, anything like that, any kind of foundation exercises or qigong exercise that helps with that would be useful for you. So is, is it fair to say then as if the body is going down, the intention is going up and vice versa? That kind yes. of thing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. That, that, yeah. That's helpful. Yeah, thank you. So and because of uh, when you're sinking into your knees, that's when people start to have issues with knees because 
as they're sinking down and then they're turning. The knees are bearing a lot of that kind of rotational work. So because when you're suspended from above, you, know, you can't really twist your knees in that same way. So that's also helpful. I don't think you have any knee problems, but for other people, that's often how their knee problems start to be exacerbated or even caused because of you know, sort of that uh, issue as well. So it's good to bear in mind, you know, as we're all getting older, our, our knees are something that can bear the brunt of things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Um, and the other thing I was going to say that you're very open and expansive. You know, your movements have this nice expansiveness, so that's a really good feature. So keep keep all of that. Just really work on this up, down, yin, yang juxtaposition. Okay, great. Thank you. You're Can welcome. I ask you that very specific question now? Oh, yes. Um, yes. It, there, there's a portion where we're. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to spotlight you. Just a second. Hang on a second. Yeah. Just going to spotlight you. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're doing this. And then it goes into it, that, that push forward. So, uh, so the question is, what, what's happening? How do we do that transition? What's happening in the rest of the body, in the hands and so on, to get to this part? Oh, OK, so you're talking from the transition uh, from uh, push to single whip, that whole transition. Yes, yes. Oh, OK. Uh, so uh, first of all, remember, if, in all these movements, you know, the reason your hands are out is because you've just been dealing with a, a, a malfeasant, uh, like, uh, I was going to say, uh, like a Donald Trump type of thing, and you just shoved him off into the, into the side. <laughs> so at any point in time, you know, we're going to give him what's for. <laughs> so here, as we transition, because here is somebody in your space. So you're curling because that person, that entity is there. So you're always, you know, your hands are on somebody. And usually because, you know, in fighting, it's all close proximity. So, there, you know, there's people right here in this space, which is why we want to think of outside of ourselves, because otherwise, you know, we're all sort of scrunched up against them. So you're controlling, you're moving, you are moving outside of this person's space. They're right here. So as we're going around, you're going to trip them over your leg. That's why your hand come, is coming here, and then this hand is coming behind them. So this is indicating that you've got them here with this hand. You're pulling them down, and this hand is to trip them over this, this leg. So that person's gone. They're on the ground. But usually, because you're surrounded by people, these are also for multiple person attacks. So after here, this person has gone down, so you're not worried about this person right now because they've already gone down that way. So as you get to here, this would be holding, this would be behind their back, shoulder blades sort of area. They're going over that knee. So the next person is this person here you've got to deal with. So after here, the hands are going to swing around. And they're going to go into this corner. So it's not so much a um, like a, a push. It's more that as you hear, you're also stamping, kicking. So this is a stamping, kicking movement. So you're going to hook. We always hook the leg. So if somebody was standing here, you're going to hook their leg. These hands here flow back around. So this is more, I might have to borrow my technical assistant. <laughs> but we've just got rid of this person. So this is, so this person is going to try and kick with this leg if you lift this way. Yeah. So here is the trip. So then the tripping. So your hands, whenever your hands come down, <laughs> whenever your hands come down, it's to catch a leg. Okay, and then this leg, so we can come over, we won't do it. <laughs> so it's a throwing, so you're, you're hooking with the leg, so that then you catch the leg. So of course, form movements and application are always a little bit different, but hooking and catching the leg, this would be a throw, this part is a throw. After you throw, they're going to go down, 
So it's not so much a push, it's more that you're a throw kind of action. The other aspect of, that we could use, oh, oh dear. <laughs> so if we, if we don't do a throw, because not every application is going to be seen through in that entirety. The other part we have, this part is also uh, a strike. So it could be a strike and often we have this to the chest area because that's for the heart to, a, um, a, I don't know if you stop the heart, but to shock the heart or into the solar plexus. So any move that you do with the double palm is not a push, it's a strike of the palms. And it can also be down below because if you're lower, you're also going to strike this area down here. <laughs> so it's a sort of mixture of uh, throws or possible potentially like palm strikes. Okay, thank you. No, that was very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So the idea of the flow though, so after we get to here, we're going to have this flowing action. Okay, so the flowing action of the form choreography doesn't necessarily kind of fit into, in, you know, a particular uh, application, if you like. It's a kind of reminder that these are the things that you would do if you're going to throw. These are the things you're going to do if you're going to strike. And if you're going to continue a throw or if you're going to strike. Because the next strike is you're stepping in now. To continue. So because if none of those things work, you have to follow through. So it's a sort of reminder of the potential applications for individual circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's like I said, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Hope that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. So for a lot of the, the linking moves, you know, they that's what they are. They're linking you to like, okay, well that throw didn't really work. So how do we transition to another controlling move? And every time the hands move, they're controlling or on top of or holding on to somebody. So that's the sort of idea you have to keep in, in your mind, that the hands are constantly moving, the same way that the feet are constantly moving, because people who are attacking you are constantly moving too. Right. And, and I suppose that each of those throw and, and push and so on. It could be different depending on the circumstance, but in the form, it takes on this character. But like you say, it's a reminder there, there are potentially other applications. Yes, yeah. So that, that's one thing I think for, the, for any form, uh, that's why you have so many, you know, in terms of like the Xing Yi movements, you have like the 12 animals. You know, well, why do you need all of these different movements? It's because people will do all kinds of things. So it's like, well, if A happened, then you would do B. But if right. A didn't quite work and B wasn't appropriate, then you have to have C. So you have, that's really the same with the choreography of the form. It's like saying, well, what if all of these things might be happening at one time or in quick succession, you have to have an answer to all of them. So what's the easiest way to kind of um, fix that in people's minds is you create a piece of choreography but inside the choreography is like, well, how would I deal with this situation, this situation, this situation, this situation? And um, that's, it's sort of inherent within the form movements. So I think what, what often goes wrong is that the form becomes its, people see the form itself as the means to the end, where in fact it really is like lots of different notes being sort of sung, but how would you sort of use those notes that's not, the form is not meant to be like, well, you do, first you do single whip and then you would do, you know, brush knee. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, uh, I think, uh, after single whip, we would say, then you don't immediately go to um, white crane. You know, there are many other things you might do according to the circumstances. So you don't follow the form in which to deal with somebody. They are just putting those individual notes into a, a sort of a, a tangible shape, but nothing more, if you like. All right, thank, thank you very much. Hey, well, <laughs> We're not taking up too much time, so thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so 
Uh, I think, oh, I think maybe maybe Jim has already left. I'm sorry to get so goodbye. Oh, oh, uh, Jim's saying bye to him. <laughs> I didn't see. So, yeah, so I did not, not catch Jim as he went. But um, okay, so let me clear the board. So one, one thing I'll say about just as I'm cleaning. When you first start learning Tai Chi, the form is everything. You know, learning the four movements is is the key to everything. But as you've been learning for a very long time, you start to see how much the form dissolves and you start to see individual things inside the form as being more important. But at the beginning, the form is the most important because otherwise you'll never see those individual things. So it's like a musician, you know, they have to learn the notes and the scales before they can put songs together. But, you know, as you go further down, like, I mean, I'm not a huge jazz uh, aficionado, but uh, some of these great jazz, uh, uh, what was the chap we were watching the other day? Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker. You know, one note becomes the symphony when that person is like that empresario, you know. So it's the same thing with the form, if you get what I mean. <laughs> okay, so who's going to go next? I could do next. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me get situated here. I was trying to find a position where you'd be able to see. The whole body and I'm Okay. okay. Hmm. How is that? It's okay. Yeah. Can't see your feet, but no. Um. I previewed this and could not reach a good solution. Lauren, I found putting my uh, video up high and then sh and then angling it down uh, toward my body that that helps to get as much of me as possible in. If that's possible for you. Well, this is what happens when I move it up. So what are you seeing? I just see my head. Is that better or worse? Tilt the lid down also. Master Rose? Yeah, if, uh, I think they're saying, are you using your laptop? Thank you, pardon? Are you using your laptop? Uh, iPad. I, I've had, is it possible to angle it like that way rather than that way? Sort of, is there a way to do it so that it, without it falling forwards, obviously? But yeah, that's looking better. That's looking better. Yeah, I think that's probably as much as we're going to see. That's better. Yeah, we can see <coughs> much more of your chart. <laughs> okay, so um, right before I left on vacation, teacher Gabe uh, introduced me to uh, needle to see bottom and to fan penetrates back. Um, and it's been about a month since I've seen her. So I wanted to just check in on how this is doing. Okay.
see before the, cut, the, the break in the um, recording. Um, I think if we go through it together, uh, there's a sort of couple of points with, at the beginning, um, but the main point would be in your needle. Uh, your needle sort of, you kind of drop the needle. So uh, it's needle at sea bottom. Um, and then uh, the fans at the back, I'm sorry, the video kind of stopped a bit, so I, I didn't see that particular part, but needle at sea bottom, there was a sort of a collapsing as opposed to a, for a driving down. So uh, let, let's do it together. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, where are I? So what happened, so here, So think of all the time, whenever you've got your hands, there's somebody there, you're controlling somebody there, you, you're grabbing a hand here or a hand here. And this, anytime a hand comes down, that would be a palm strike. So when you have a palm strike, you know, your, your palm strike is to the face in this position here. And then, because you're raising your elbow, so that would be an elbow strike. This is the back of the hand. This is a palm. So now you're got you're controlling somebody who's here. So think of those kinds of concepts. So anytime this happens, it's a palm strike. There's a follow through. You know, after you've struck somebody, your hand has to, you know, has an arc that it has to continue along. And here you're drawing up, so that's going to be your elbow. This is getting ready for another palm. This is the back of the hand. Now you're controlling. Here is also controlling. You're getting ready to control or uh, sweep them aside. Now your hands are returning because you're going to do your brush knee. Okay, so that, that's part of what's going on with the hands. So anytime you have this sweeping around, they're actually strikes or misdirections or controlling elbows. So think of that as part of your, your movement. Um, we had like needle of sea bottom. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> of the things I was going to say. Um, so when you had your needle, when it came up here, you kind of collapse down. So don't collapse down as it's coming up, it's going to go forward and down. So at the moment, your needle is sort of just collapsing. So once we come down here, it's going to come up, forward, down. Okay, so uh, when you do needle at sea bottom, when it comes up, then go forward, then go, you're driving down here. Here, you're stepping in, you're getting ready for fan through the back. Then you have this arc through the, the, the side, through the ribs. Okay, so think of a, a fan you know, as a fan movement. So a little bit like the staff uh, form that you, you've been practicing, you have a movement like this in the staff form. So fans through the back is doing that same sort of uh, movement, opening up the ribs and extending the, that the, through the spine. Okay, so fans through the back, you have to get this real open and expansiveness. Needle at sea bottom, you're going up, forward and then down. So you get this openness through the spine. Okay, so what happened just then, your needle sort of collapsed into yourself. You want to be right. going. Right. So There's up. an extension. Yeah, the extension up. So you can see how you get your openness through the spine here. Then forward. So you're now you're going above and beyond the person who's in front of you and then you go down. 
and then you're gathering up, gathering in. This is also similar to what we were saying, Nick, earlier about this uh, throw. And then we have fan through the back. Okay. So do you want to do that again for me? Let me see your movements again. Okay. Okay, so let this is spotlight Lauren. Well, let's see, what did we do? We did... Oh, okay. So uh, it's getting there. It's it's getting it, it, it's getting there. It's getting more uh, of the of the movements through. So um, once once we come here, so I'll step back a bit. So once we have here, we have this. So uh, because of uh, your balance and knees and uh -huh. you. Low as you feel comfortable, but here, this will be a strike. Then we have a grasping up. So oh. up. Then we go up, down, over, oh, out, and then down, and then lifting up. So this is our uh, grabbing the leg of, of a person who's kicking, and then fan through the back. So we have. Misdirect, step in and strike, lifting up, extending up, forward, down, sweeping up. So here is like a grabbing a kick, getting ready to misdirect, and then we have fan through the back. Okay. So after we have our brush knee, uh -huh. so we have misdirect. You are now stepping into their space, groin strike, always good. Grabbing. So uh, here, after you strike the groin, don't forget to grab it. So you have strike, uh, <laughs> lifting up, extending forwards, and then down. So now someone's trying to kick you, so you're grabbing the leg, getting that little doing we talked about with Nick earlier, and then fan to the back. So when, every time you do this movement, it's a, a master dong used to say, uh, throw out the rubbish. So, well, after you've grabbed someone, you, you know, you're throwing the rubbish. So you know, if you grab a, a, a kicking leg and you're going to throw them, you know, you've really got to, to throw them. So that's all what's going on inside that movement. And the, uh, the needle at C bottom, it's not dropping a needle, it's driving the needle. So that's why you have this extension up, forward, and then down. So, uh -huh. again, you feel as low as you feel comfortable, but here is lifting up as high as it can go, forward, as far forward as you can make it go, and then down in your mind as low as it can go. So you really get, uh -huh. not just physically, but mentally, think of this real needle driving to the sea bottom because that's the chin up. So you're, you're, you have to think of your intention going over and above and down as far as you can go. And that's what the, the breaks that lock on their wrist. Okay, hope, hope, hope that helps. Uh -huh. Yes, that there's a, a lot of terrific pointers there. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you so much, Master Rose. I know you have to go. Can I just add, ask one quick question, or do we not have time? Oh, we're, we're okay. We, we have time. No, we're okay. Oh, okay. Because I noticed on this 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 part that um, uh, 
I'm just doing some choreography here. I notice on the videos that I think Master Wong also adds in some, some he does another flourish here first, I think. Yeah. But that could just be another uh, part of the, the flourishes that he does put in sometimes, perhaps. Yeah, but uh, the flourishes, as you say, uh, yeah, the, we, we always have these little flowery uh, movements, but anytime we have any of those, it's like a, um, like an, an extra move if the first one doesn't work. So Master Don would always say like, well, you know, like if at first you don't succeed. <laughs> so after we have here, so um, when we come in here, we have this. This would be fighting to get control of the of the wrist or fighting to get control. Because you know if you ever see people when they're doing the the uh, the Wing Chun, you know, you see there's a lot of this. It's because you're fighting to get control of the hands. So anytime you have that kind of motion, it's because you know, you're grabbing, it's counter grabbing. So it's lock, counter lock, counter lock, and then you've got them. So there's yeah. what appear to be sort of flourishes and things. You know, it's like, well, because somebody's grabbing you or you're grabbing them and then you're trying to escape from their grab. So it's adding more of that in there or sometimes not adding that in there. So that's really what those uh, movements mean. So yeah, after you have here, you have this, and then up and over. Now you've gained control, as it were. Yeah. So after you go down for a needle at sea bottom, you have this. Yeah, that other the other little one. Yeah, that flourish you put in there. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's again the same thing that after you've. Uh, Needle at sea bottom here. Somebody's trying to grab you and someone's trying to kick you, so you've got to get control of the leg. Yeah. And then you're throwing the leg. Oh, thank you, Master Rose. That's great because I, I really appreciate these sessions. Uh, these are great because it, it helps me as I'm trying to help my students that we can get what we're what are we trying to do? We can get it from you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm from a person. I'm sorry, Ada? Time for one more person. Oh, yeah, there's time for other. Don't mind, we have time. Um, yeah, just, just sort of uh, saying about, you know, everyone, like, for example, uh, Master Wong and I, we do things a little different because we're two different people. But when we first started, we mimic everything that Master Dong did. And Master Dong would say, you know, after about three years of our student learning, you know, you start to then develop your own flavor and because of your own size, you know, your build, your mentality, your own form will start to take on its own little characteristics because, you know, maybe your uh, focus is more on locking and grappling. Uh, but, you know, for a, a stronger, bigger person, locking and grappling are better. They're good to you because you have control over someone else's body because of your own size, shape, or uh, background. But if you're a smaller person, you know, even if you are, you know, a, a fantastic martial artist, if you're trying to take on some, you know, like a, uh, I don't know, uh, think of somebody big. Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant, you know, <laughs> you know, you know your, your two hands don't even measure as big as one of his fingers, you know, so that would not be the best uh, advice for you to try and lock him. So you have to have other focus for that. So somebody smaller might focus, like for me, I, I focus more on the sort of small, sharp strikes rather than the grappling. So that's why our Master Wong and I, our forms now have sort of some slight differences because they're based on our personalities. So the same thing I would say to uh, someone of Gabe's experience, you know, you now also will be developing some of your own uh, little uh, personal sort of characteristics based on your body, that, that's fine. As long as you know what you're doing, that, that's fine. But for your students, they should not be thinking of making their own flourishes yet. They should be following what they're being taught until they have experience of at least two or three years of movement so you're completely comfortable with the choreography. Then you know, naturally your body will start to follow its own particular you know, sort of um, characteristics. 
So that's really uh, the, sort of the difference. And Master Dong would always say, you know, you're, eventually, if 20 years later, your form still looks exactly like your teachers, you know, like a sort of McDonald's cookie cutter, there's a problem. Okay. So, Actually asking, do you have time to see my form? Oh, of course, yes, yes. So let, let's, let's. Okay, very, very good. Thank you, uh, Ada. Well done. Um, I think the, the main thing, <clears throat> go back to what we were talking about applications. Imagine there's always somebody right in front of you that you're either controlling or uh, seeking to control. And when you're striking, you know, have that mentality in mind. So I, I know Ada, you're a very peaceable, peace-loving lady. So you probably don't go around hitting people. <laughs> so, so think about what your body would be doing in that kind of framework. So for example, if we borrow our technical assistant. So for fist under elbow, a lot of people mistake it to mean um, you know, my, my fist under my own elbow. So what it actually is talking about is my fist under their elbow. So when we have this elbow, we want to lift up that person's ribs. So you expose and open their ribs. So then when your strike comes, it can drive in. <laughs> so if their elbows are down, you know, they can make this sort of very solid protection. So that's why we have this movement like this or movement like this. So in the movement we have, in the form we have this. So basically it's saying lift this up and then when you strike, this is open. <laughs> so that's the idea of fist under elbow. So you're lifting up their uh, ribs so that you can strike. So the form movement is again going to look slightly different from real application. You know, real application, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be like this. You know, real application is you're lifting up and striking in. But you know, choreography has to flow, so that's why you have certain look to the movement. So that's something for you to think about when you're doing the movement. You're lifting up their elbow and you're striking in. So you don't have to get it like under your own elbow, it's here. And the reason we're looking slightly to the corner is because we're not straight on to the person, we're coming to the side because you're striking underneath their, their arm into their ribs. So that means you're, they're oblique to you. So that's why you're here, sort of not here. Okay. Uh, the other part I would say is when we do look to the left, look to the right, um, it's with the body, but not sort of, you don't want to get into too much of a awkward shape, if you understand what I mean. Um, so um, after this open double whip, we have look to the left, look to the right, then we have uh, driving palm strike, then we have look to the left, so although you're sinking back, try to make your whole body sink back, not just from the, the waist upwards. 
And then we have this on the elbow. So at the moment, there's a sort of awkward shift more just from the trunk. Try to get more of your hips into the move as well. Okay, that, that looks better. That looks better. So again, remember it's because you're, you know, potentially facing the opponent here and here, and then coup de grace is your, you know, lifting up their arm to strike into the rib area with your fist. Okay. So I think it's looking very good, Ada. Just keep remembering, you know, as you're learning the choreography, don't forget what your hands are doing. They're controlling somebody or, you know, managing somebody, getting ready to strike somebody. You know, so it's sort of have that mentality in your hands, if you see what I mean. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I will work on that. Thank you very much. Okay. And yeah, just relax your hands a little bit. So, uh, Master Don would say, use the same amount of strength in your hands as if you were holding an umbrella. Okay. So, of course, if the wind, he wasn't talking about in a 10 force scale, you know, when you have to really hang on to the umbrella. But, you know, normally if you're just in normal weather, a light drizzle, your hand is very softly holding the umbrella. It okay. doesn't need to really grasp and grip so hard. So keep it soft. Okay. So, thank you, Ada. So, uh, uh, I think, Gabe, it's over to you. Okay. So, here we go. Okay. Very good, looking really good. So, yeah, look, looking really good, Gabe. It's uh, got a nice flow to it, and you look uh, really in command of your movement. So that, that's looking really good. Um, I, I can see the comfort that in your movements, if you know what I mean. I think once you've been, um, you start to feel comfortable with the movements, there's a certain sort of uh, kind of a uh, sense of confidence that comes through in the energy in what you're oh. doing. So it looks really good. Um, uh, just a couple of points for high pat on horse. What like what yeah. happening? How did I mess that one up? <laughs> so after after here, so. Um, I think it's the best way to do it. So we have high pat on pause. Yeah. So we have this movement. So this oh, is going to be a strike to the uh, to the neck. Yeah. Right. Another strike to the neck. Yes. And then we have getting ready for our kicks. Oh, I see. I didn't. I didn't do this step. I, yeah. I, I don't think I did. That. I don't know if I actually. I might have just fluffed through this part, maybe. Yeah. So we have. Um, one, yes, two, sometimes we can have three, yeah, and then we have two our yeah. preparatory posture. So, in the last third part of the section, up we have one, two, three, so we have a, a patting down. So, oh. yeah, so this is although this doesn't really kind of uh, it's not, um so apparent in the second section. So 
when you have this kind of movement, yeah. it's sort of patting and chopping. Yes. So this, anytime we have this hand, it's like a, can't do it to my own neck, <laughs> but you know, you'll be uh, chopping into the neck, yes. so the Adam Lapple area, and this would be a patting down. So because someone's trying to strike you, so you have to have a, a pat, pat down, yeah. uh, pat down, and pat down so that you can strike to the neck. Yes. So that's what all of this is doing. Yeah. And then we I, we can have it two ways, and it's, it's all up to the individual. We can go straight from here, yeah. and then we go into our uh, preparation for separate hands and feet. Yeah. So in this movement as well, when you get to here, don't forget as your elbow rises, if I do it from, let me see. So from here. So this is all very good. This is really good. So you're going to sweep down. Here, any, anytime your elbow is rising, that's a potential elbow strike. Yes. And then here you're lifting up. Yeah. Then you have your um, high balance pulse to the oblique side. Yes. This was good. This was good. Take your time with the kick so you really lift your elbow up. Ah, okay. It'll get to the side. And as your foot comes down, don't let it drop down. Try to step it out a bit. Okay. And then we have our high pattern horse to the oblique side again. Yes. Then coming down to the center, lifting up to the corner here. Separate hands and feet. Again. And again, lift. Take your time to lift up your knee. Ah, uh, yeah. And then this leg helps to turn you around. And then we talked last time about this kick from the rear leg. Yes. So we have separate hands and feet. So this is this part of the foot that you're oh, doing. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. So this, these two kicks, and then this is a side heel foot. kick. Right. Um, okay. okay, can I ask one other quick question? Yeah, of course. Thank you. So when I was with Master Wang Ming Bo, and he's talking to me in Chinese, I'm afraid my Chinese is not so good, you know. <laughs> but I kept thinking, I can do this. I will follow him. And he kept saying things like, Shitsa Denbu, I think that's what he said, when he would want me to do this, to get really ready for something. Dianbu uh, uh, is like, Dian means like step down yeah. your toe. Ah, so this is Dian Bu. Dian Bu. That he was, and he yeah. kept saying, don't, if, I think he was trying to get me to, like what you just said, to not just kick from here, but to really cross, you know, really, really do it. Yeah, so uh, we come, so you're, you're wanting to get this movement, so you know where you do our... Um, yes. So, it, because you want to get as much of the hip. As much of the oh. so he, he kept... So, sorry, I, I don't think I quite understood what the Chinese was, but I think what he was trying to get me to do was to really, really cross that leg. Yes. I go to the right before I go to the left. Yes. So, okay. uh, this dian bu means like put the toe down, but ah. it's like go across. Go across. Go across. So, that's why you're coming over here yeah. and then out. So, it's like when we do our basic training exercises, uh, a lot of people will just do from here, so yes. they want to get across and open the hip. Oh, okay. So this is the same movement. So it's coming across. So uh, you have this crossing. Yes. Like, yes. A, like uh, cross hands. So you come across. Yes. So you start with this, like touching the floor, but it's like it means really get as wide and as big an arc as possible. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Man. Okay, I, I will practice more of that. And thank you for clarifying. I have to say, I, I can't wait to get back to China. I'm so excited that someday we're going to get back there. But it does get interesting to take a lesson in Chinese. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, <coughs> Colin and I were just talking. Uh, it'll be a year almost uh, that I've been here. And oh, I came 
months. Hey, literally for two weeks. Yeah. And then when I was here, the I think it was in a few days because you know I think when Lauren and, and you gave when you left uh, yeah. last year. It was almost touch and go if you would get out yourselves. It was really good. Oh, it, was, it was tough for us uh, a year ago. We had to be very careful. They kept asking us lots of questions as we came through. Yeah. yeah. But many more questions than, than normal, you know, like really looking at us carefully, you know. And so anyway, yeah, it was tricky. Yeah. So I think um, uh, when uh, you, you guys left last year and, and then I was a few days after you, I, I followed on. Um, and then when uh, I was here, only a couple of days, uh, my school notified me that they were going to add on an extra week to the, the Chinese New Year sort of uh, break time. And I was saying to myself, like, ooh, I'm getting away with an extra week away, you know, ooh. So I didn't know that was going to turn into basically like a year. <laughs> oh, that's gross. It's just amazing. Well, I'm, I'm so excited. I don't want to take time from anybody else. Um, I don't know if Sala, Sala probably doesn't want to pre present anything, but I wanted to say I'm so happy. I think that's Sala. And uh, I'll put Sala on the list so he can know more about our schedule. And uh, uh, yeah, and I'll be in touch with you, Master Rose, about different scheduling and how we want to proceed. It's so cold here that I've been changing my schedule to uh, do my practices Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays at two in the afternoon when it's so cold, but then it got really cold and nobody even wanted to come out then. So anyway, I'm doing Zoom now. Yeah, uh, I think it's a wise move. I mean, we've had snow here and yeah. it's like minus one, minus two on a regular basis. too cold so. to go yeah. out at all. So I think I'm gonna go to Zoom just to do the practice, you know, with the Qigong and the form and the staff. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at two, my time. Yeah, that's probably a good idea to do that because otherwise, people. The worst thing that can happen is that when the weather's cold, either very cold or very very hot, people stop coming to classes or you know outside classes and things, and it's very easy for that one or two weeks to turn into a long period of time when people don't practice and meet up. So I think Zoom's turning out to be the savior of this pandemic. So. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so this afternoon, I, 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 won't, I won't teach this afternoon because we had this this morning. I'll send out a notice this afternoon that I'll be on Zoom Wednesday and Friday afternoon at 2. And, and as you all know, I'm trying to find a really good and authentic way to uh, get some more students involved. And uh, I mean, are we all, you know? Uh, and then I'll be in touch for how I can get up with you to uh, get more corrections. And I definitely want to keep these monthly uh, correction master classes going, if that works for you, ma'am. Oh, no, that, that's fantastic. And it's lovely to see everybody and work together. So, you know, I'm happy to do that. So, yeah, no, let's keep it going. I yeah. think uh, it's, uh, it's very helpful for everybody to kind of get together at least and, uh, you know, really work together. And I, I think from what Nick was saying, talk, listening to Jim, um, the sort of corrections that go to Jim, you know, that's helpful. For somebody else as well because sometimes you have one question but you had others too so yeah. that oh that's actually something i was also thinking of myself anyway so i think it's really helpful oh yeah all your corrections i wrote them all down because obviously they're all for me too <laughs> <laughs> well this is one thing master don would always say to us is um you know when you're learning you know we would go and because my Chinese, particularly at that time, you know, I, I couldn't really understand much of what was being said. So I had to really concentrate and I had to watch everything. Yeah. And it was interesting, a lot of the Chinese students, because it's all in Chinese, you know, they were sort of, oh, that bit was for me. Oh, that's now the new person, nothing to do with me. So they wouldn't listen. And, you know, I would be like intently watching every single yeah. thing. And in trying to internalize it because, of, well, maybe I need to know that. That's something I need to watch and listen to. And he would say to me and to others that, you know, this approach is the best approach. And that's how he learned. He said, because, yeah, maybe you didn't ask, ask that question, but the answers your teacher gave are helpful for you, not just for the future for yourself, but if other people ask you, how would you answer that? So I think it's, uh, that stayed with me, that he said, you know, we really enjoyed and um, appreciated the way that I would like, <laughs> like watching and listening. Because that way, you know, if somebody else asked, I'd say, well, I heard Master Don say, you should do blah, blah, blah. And, you know, 
it helps somebody else. So I think these kind of sessions are really useful. So I, I'm, I, I love getting together with you all. So hope it's been helpful today. Okay. Um, I don't. What's your time schedule? Can you can you do some more? Or do you have to go now, Master Rose? Well, um, what we could do, if everyone would like to, we could just do the first section together, just as a nice way to wrap up. I would. I would love to. I was thinking about Joe's question about cloud hands. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. I, thank you for reminding me. Yes. Yeah, so that, that's that. Yeah. I'll be a bit mindful of the time, but uh, yeah. If I do talk about what Joe's question was about cloud hands, and then. Uh, the first section is quite short, so maybe we can just do the first section together. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, um, uh, just for cloud hands, so I'll, I'll go from single single whip. So we have, uh, oh, sorry, go <laughs> cloud hands. So we do our same movement here. So for cloud hands here, these hands are uh, gripping, not hard, but they're gripping and controlling. So this hand is rising up, this hand goes down as you trade the weight across. So it's very important to get in this weight transition so the feet step in. So anytime here, so if we invite our technical assistant just to show for, for Joe, what yeah. are your hands, your hands doing? So yeah, we'll just look at the hands themselves. So this posture for the hands, for cloud hands, so this is the hand going up, this is the hand going down, and then as we're turning and moving, we're controlling. So, and then for this hand, same thing. So this hand is going down, this hand is going up, always going to underneath the, the um, armpit. And so you want to turn the hand, and then you're turning, and then this hand will turn away because you've thrown them. Yeah. So, when we do with cloud hands, we have this. Yeah. That, that's basically what is going on. And because you've thrown, you don't want to keep your hand this way all the time. Now you're turning to protect your own wrist. And then you're adding movement in. And you're looking outside of yourself because there's somebody here a lot of people will say, you know, look at the hands, but you know, the hands are holding a person, so that's why we don't look at our hands. But we're looking, our hands are following where we're looking because here is the person that you're controlling. And because it's choreography, you know, we're trying to make our movements and our uh, transitions flow together. And here we're looking outside of ourselves because we're controlling this person. So our, our intention is leading the movement of our hands. And we're trying to sink down in the hip, to put the foot on the floor, and then slowly trade the weight. So for cloud hands, think of it's because there's a person that you're manipulating and controlling. And this is uh, going up and down the arm yes. of that person. So that's why you have this sort of movement here, this splitting action. So anytime you have this kind of spitting and moving, it's because this hand is controlling that person's wrist yes. or, or arm, uh, lower arm, and then this is pulling them open. So you're splitting them so that they're feeling like getting this kind of reaction to that person. Yes, so, and it's like the, uh, the young Sancho at movement 31, whatever it is, we, we, that, we do that in the young Sancho, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that, I hope that will help, help Joe. Thanks for reminding me. I had it written down on my paper, but completely forgot at the end, so thanks for reminding me. Thank so, you very much. Yeah, so, hope that helps Joe. But um, I think one of the things, uh, once we get into the third section of the form, there are two different cloud hands. So we'll talk about that for Joe um, later on when uh, he's learning the third section. But, you know, <laughs> but the, the idea with cloud hands is going to be the same, that that person is being manipulated and controlled, but just they add in variations because people do different things. So you have to be able to respond and or well, what if they do that instead to me? Okay, so that's how cloud hands will uh, transition in, in light of those new circumstances. But that first one is uh, very, um, a sort of simpler 
of the, the three cloud hands movements. Thank you so much. Okay, so let, let's do the uh, first section of the form and then uh, I know Colin has a meeting coming up, so we'll, we'll sort of wrap up after the, the first section. So I hope, hope that will work with everybody. So let's, uh, let's I'll turn around and, and don't forget if I have to move my feet, it's be only because of the space of the room. So don't, don't remember that. Just, just remember that's not the normal form. It's foot shuffle. Ah. So, okay, chill out. How, how's that for everybody? Okay, so let's start.
Good to see everyone again. Uh, I saw uh, Lauren's just uh, had to say goodbye, so sorry I didn't get to say goodbye to her personally, but wish uh, everybody well over in uh, Durham and North Carolina, and hopefully by this time next month, things will be a lot better. We'll have some adults in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we, we, we hope so. And I'll, I'll be in touch um, so we can see about making uh, another uh, one of these sessions uh, for February. Okay, uh, great. Thank you, Kay. I really appreciate all your support and, you know, organizing everybody. It's, uh, it's great to see everybody making such good progress and well done to you on your teaching. I think you're really helping many people over there. So well done to you on, on doing such a great job. Oh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Gabe. Thanks to everybody for coming and see you all soon and take care of yourselves. Thank Keep you. Keep well and best wishes to, best wishes to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.